And he, this, I don't know, he or she, whoever it was, this person um, said that, uh, you know, basically equating, uh, you know, totalitarianism and collectivism is kind of at the heart of religion. And I feel like sometimes a lot of people can look at the sacraments in any faith tradition, whether it's the seven sacraments in the Catholic Church or um, even going to the Orthodox Church, or yeah. um, they, they look at them as like this binding hold of manipulation hmm. that people have, that the Church has over people. And so they can manipulate people into doing what they want to do, uh. um, which that's not to say that there, I'm sure there have been pastors, yep. um, priests, popes, People in the past, in history, through their um, you know their own sinful nature, have no doubt yes. uh, abused that. Right. Um, what would you say to somebody who might be in that state where they're like, yeah, yeah. baptism is just this manipulative tool that people use, so they get your money and <laughs> you know they sprinkle some water, they got to pay for the water, whatever the reason is, yeah. you know what what would you say uh, to that? Where they're they're withholding, you know, the church is withholding salvation from you if you don't get baptized. Um. Uh, again, the church. I would just say the church has no authority to withhold salvation. <laughs> that's, I mean, that's that's up to God. Yeah. And so He didn't give the church that kind of authority. He gave the church sacraments to give His grace for folks, and He's entrusted that for the church to give. I would just say, you know, this is not the reality. Might people um, abuse, you know, the sacraments God gave us? Of uh, certainly, we we do that in our fallen nature, but. Yeah. Again, this is not created by the church. This was created by Jesus. If you believe in God, and if you, especially if you're a Christian, then I don't think you need to have a problem with this. Jesus desires that we all be one. Um, that's his greatest desire is unity in the church, unity, unity among Christians, and, and unity with himself. And mm. that's the purpose of the sacraments. The purpose of the sacraments is the ordinary means by which he gives us his divine life. And so it's a great gift. It's not something to be manipulated. It's a great gift that he offers to us. Um, you know, it's it's like uh, maybe an analogy I can use before is like these sacraments um, don't inhibit our freedom. It's not like it, it manipulating our, our salvation or the economy of salvation. It's to help us in our salvation. God is giving us to give us his grace. It's like the rules of a game of basketball. Any mm. good basketball player is going to tell you that the rules don't take away your freedom to play the game. They don't inhibit your ability to play the game. Actually, the rules are what allow you to play the game. It's like, well, they're just manipulating the athletes to make sure they dribble and to make sure they stay in a certain, you know, boundaries. Yeah. It's like, no, a good basketball player knows without those things, I cannot freely play the game. The yeah. boundary keeps the game happening. You know, I, I have to dribble, so I can't just sprint all over the court with the ball. So the rules are not arbitrary. The rules in basketball mm -hmm. allow you to play the game freely, and a good basketball player knows that. In the Christian life, you could look at the sacrament. You could look at the, this, the moral law of God the same way, but you could look at baptism or the sacraments in this way, that they don't inhibit our freedom. They don't manipulate us or our salvation. In fact, they allow us to be free. The sacraments is what God gives us so that we can freely play the game, so to speak. We can freely be Christians, and we can freely have moral certainty of our salvation. Yeah, I love that. That's great. Now, uh, diving into something you mentioned earlier, too, yeah. about the sacraments, I know some people might not be aware of what a sacrament is, and yes. baptism being a sacrament, um, obviously there's an understanding that it, it's more than just a symbol, Yes. right? So tell me a bit about that. How do you understand baptism as more than a symbol, mm -hmm. as many non-Catholic traditions might see it? Yes. So sacraments, um, we would say, are, are sacred signs instituted by Christ to give grace. So it's those three things. They are sacred signs. So they are symbols. Um, they are instituted by Christ. They have to be instituted by Jesus himself um, in order to give grace, unto grace, uh, <laughs> to give us grace, not because of the grace we've already been given. So they give us grace. So it's those yeah. three parts. So if we look at baptism, we would say that it's a sacred sign. It's a symbol. Um, it certainly is a symbol. Um, there's the symbol of water, of being immersed in water, of, you know, of dying to our sins and then coming out of the water into newness of life, to rising from the dead as mm -hmm. Jesus rose from the dead so that we might walk in newness of life. So there's a symbol in that. There's, of course, a symbol in water of being washed in the water. Therefore, we're washed, the symbol of being washed of our sins. Um, we come out of that sin is, is clean, you know, made pure, new creations. So it's certainly a symbol. We would say that Jesus instituted this sacrament 
um, right? He, he told us to be baptized and he instituted the, the, the waters of baptism. And then finally, though, to give grace. So that, this is the essential part of baptism is it's not just a symbol. It's not just a sacred sign, but it actually mm. uh, accomplishes what it symbolizes. So it doesn't just yeah. symbolize forgiveness of sins. It forgives our sins. It doesn't just for symbolize us like, you know, putting on a, a, or putting aside our old self and becoming new creations. We actually become new creations. As uh, St. Paul says in 2 Corinthians 5, 17, anyone who is in Christ is a new creation. The old has passed away and behold, new has come. And what does it mean to be in Christ? I mean, if you look at Paul's letter to the Galatians, let me pull this up here. He says that to be in Christ is to be baptized. And so this is from his letter to the Galatians, chapter uh, uh, 3, verse 26 and 27. He says, For in Christ Jesus you are all sons of God through faith. For as many of you as were baptized into Christ have put on Christ. So by our baptism, we have, you know, been for, we, are, we are forgiven of our sins, all sin, original and personal sin. Uh, we're given real grace. The gi- actually, in fact, we're given the grace of, uh, we're given sanctifying grace, which is a restoration of how we were created in the first place. And we are made new creations in Christ. So though, I would say those are like the three things that occur through baptism that make it uh, more than just a symbol. Hey everyone, thank you so much for checking out this clip from the Practical Theism Podcast. If you enjoyed this clip and you want to check out the full episode, you can do so by finding it on our YouTube channel. Definitely consider subscribing and ringing that little bell so you can continue to get updates and notifications when we release new episodes and new clips just like this one. I hope to see you soon.